What do you picture when you hear the word sacrifice? Personally, I think of every movie or book character who died so the day can be won or their friends can get away safely. I think of a lot of characters from works that I'm not going to reference right now because that would spoil them. But these examples are just one type of sacrifice, sometimes referred to as the ultimate sacrifice. There are other, possibly more difficult forms of sacrifice that often get a lot less appreciation. Instead of sacrificing their life, one might sacrifice their time, their energy, or their comfort for what they see as a noble cause. Recently, I have been of the mind to analyze three separate quotes that would seem to value the latter forms of sacrifice over an ultimate one. Our first quote comes not from fiction, music, or literature, as is my usual fashion, but from a person named Sigrid Ellis, who took to Twitter after Hurricane Harvey in Texas. We, Americans, don't want to give to the needy, we want to save the endangered. While this may not be in direct reference to the idea of ultimate sacrifice, it'll set the tone for the rest of the video. The person who said this also had a number of other tweets explaining that they had recently heard that Americans tended to be good at acute compassion, meaning that they would go to great lengths to save someone from danger or give to the needy, risking life and limb. However, Americans are less good at chronic empathy, meaning that while there is no immediate danger or discomfort, they won't do as much to prevent bad situations from happening. Now obviously, the best solution for a bad situation is to make sure it never happens. So the fact that Americans aren't good at that is an issue. There's this idea of glory associated with being a hero, and some people are looking for that rather than to actually help people. Furthermore, with that kind of culture built up, the people who actually do want to help end up thinking that the way to do so is to heroically throw yourself into danger to save someone. And that isn't what we need most. This next quote comes from the hit Broadway musical Hamilton. In it, General George Washington says this. Head full of fantasies of dying like a martyr. Yes, dying is easy, young man. Living is harder. Here we see that George, who is the mentor slash source of wisdom throughout the play, dismisses the ultimate sacrifice outright. Dying on the battlefield would be easy, a simple way to assist the army and obtain the glory that Hamilton so desires. But Washington does not need more men to die. Instead, Washington seems to assert that living would be a better way to help the army, much more glorious in the long run, and would be a nobler sacrifice. You see, this is not to say that George is discouraging Hamilton from sacrifice, just discouraging him from making the wrong one. Just like us, the modern consumers of stories, Hamilton is wrapped up in his idea of the ultimate sacrifice. And like the average American, according to Sigrid, he genuinely seems to believe that this is what will help the revolution most and secure his legacy. George is quick to correct this, for what he and the revolution truly need is the other kind of sacrifice. He needs Hamilton to sacrifice the simplicity of fighting in the war. He needs him to stay alive. And although General Washington's is the quote that most explicitly states the show's approach to sacrifice, I believe the undertones are present in its entirety. Lin-Manuel Miranda, writer of Hamilton, has mentioned that it is no coincidence that every death shown on stage was the result of gun violence, so is it that much of a stretch to imagine that the fact that no death in the play was heroic or led to something greater was intentional as well? They all left you unsatisfied, as if their death was in vain. Although the deaths of Philip and Alexander are fine examples of this, neither comes close to the death of Hamilton's close companion John Lawrence. Lawrence's death did pretty much nothing good and the play acknowledges this by not painting it in a positive light. He didn't sacrifice his life so that his dream of freeing slaves could go on. In fact, that dream died as a result, with all the slaves he was trying to free going back to their masters in the aftermath of his death. His sacrifice ended up not helping the war effort either, as the war had already ended in Yorktown. No, Lauren's true sacrifice for Alexander was one not of life, but of reputation, when he agreed to duel Charles Lee, a fellow soldier who was abusing his position, on Hamilton's behalf. That one was painted in a positive light, with John and Alexander exchanging heartfelt words beforehand and ending with, I'm satisfied. All of the other heartfelt sacrifices in the play were also those of the second kind, such as when George Washington sacrifices his post as president for the good of the nation, or when Angelica sacrifices her relationship with the man she loves for her sister. Our last quote comes from schizophrenic pop artist Tyler Joseph of 21 Pilots. 
In their song, Ride, Tyler says this. I die for you, that's easy to say. We have a list of people that we would take. A bullet for them, a bullet for you, a bullet for everybody in this room. But they don't seem to see many bullets coming through. See many bullets coming through. This perfectly combines all of the ideas from our first two quotes. It's easy to say we would die for someone or take a bullet for someone. Like Tyler says, there are probably a few people we'd be willing to take a bullet for. The problem is, jumping in front of a bullet is a hypothetical, an unreal situation. Tyler realizes this in the line, I don't seem to see many bullets coming through. This type of thinking is simple, reactive, and relies on situations that will likely never happen. And so yes, if there were a bullet heading for you, and I was in a position to step in front of it, I would. But perhaps, like the Americans described by Ellis or the country's very own immigrant bastard founding father, I wouldn't devote proper time or thought into making sure you aren't going to be in a position where you're being shot at. Perhaps, if I'd made those sacrifices instead of the one I've been conditioned for, that of my life, we would both be in better situations. Perhaps if we all strive to make more complex sacrifices now, the world will be in a better situation in the future.